Good evening. Welcome to the National News Broadcast. I'm Kasuni Balachandra. Good evening. I'm Charitam Nipraarachi. And now let's move on to the headlines for tonight's news. The President instructs for curfew regulations to be strictly implemented. The support of the Tri Forces will be received in this regard. The first Sri Lankan death caused by the COVID-19 virus reported from Switzerland. The British Prime Minister tests positive for COVID-19. The tax concessions period granted by the Income Tax Department. The Prime Minister emphasizes the need for a program to uplift locally produced food. The USA calls on the international community to provide the country with medical equipment. Moving on to those and other stories in detail. As curfew has been imposed in a bid to curb the spread of the deadly coronavirus, which has posed a serious health hazard, the government notifies the public to pay strict adherence to the imposed curfew. The task force on managing the distribution of essential goods has taken all measures to maintain a continuous supply in order to facilitate the public to purchase essential food items and other commodities from their homes itself when curfew is in force. In addition, no one should roam on the roads at their will when curfew is imposed. Vehicles delivering goods, which have been permitted to operate by the task force, are allowed on the roads. The government emphasizes no other vehicle should be brought onto the roads without a curfew permit. Commuting between districts is totally prohibited, whilst escorting foreign tourists to various places is also banned fully. However, regardless of the district, permission has been granted for farming activities, cultivation activities of export crops including small-scale tea estates and fisheries to continue. Steps have been taken to continue the services at the airport and the harbour. The government has instructed that the police and the tri forces implement curfew regulations strictly. The government decided to impose curfew island-wide from the 20th of this month in a bid to control the spread of the coronavirus. They imposed curfew in Colombo, Gampa, Kalutara and Jaffna districts, which have been identified as high-risk areas, will be effective until further notice. Curfew was temporarily lifted at 6 a.m. in the Putlam, Vaunia, Mana, Kilinoch and Mulatiu districts. Almost the situation is under control. We have organized all the essential item distribution each and every place to their doorstop. The cooperatives are organizing the mobile service and the agriculture department supplying the vegetables. And fishermen are allowed to go to the sea until two nautical miles. And they are bringing the fish and they are doing the mobile supply. And yes, are looking after the district and the police and the army is helping us to control the situation. We have locked down the province because we are not allowing the people to come out or get inside because we want to look after, isolate the province and look after that province. We don't want to spread this disease to any other places. And our Excellency, the President, has given all the support and he has continued the curfew and he is giving the direction to everybody to uh, look after this district. All all stakeholders, especially the SFKAMA uh, security forces and the police and all my officers, the central and the provincial, they are doing the wonderful service. I had to be grateful for everybody. Day and night, they are looking after the people. The situation is now in under control. The police report that 4,217 individuals were arrested as at 12 noon today for curfew violations. The highest number of arrestees, which was 416 persons, were reported from the Gampa area. In addition, the police states 225 individuals from the Panadur area, 212 persons from the Chilau area, 208 persons from the Nigambo area and 206 persons from the Putlam area were arrested for violating curfew regulations. 1,063 vehicles have been seized by the police during the curfew period. The police conducted spot inspections at a number of locations today to check whether only vehicles deployed on essential services are operating on the roads.
विशेषण में मैं निरोधाय ने अंदरीनीतीय पैनों दिने सिटे अभी जनता वाटे निरंतरें दैनों दिनों ले बुआ मैं अंदरीनीतीय रे गरुकर्मिंग काटे तो करने से ये वाके में मानुषीय सह विनात तत्त्वयन सालका बला समार अवस्था वाले दी लिहिले से काटे तो करने ले बुआ ऐसे काटे तो करने ले बुए अत्यावश्यक आकार ये टा अधिरनीति ये यम्यम तत्वयन लिहिल क्रीमा जानता हुआ आयु तुले से प्रोजेक्ट ने टकार ना बावा ये वाके इमा इमा काल ये तुलीन विनात विविध काटी तोरण निरीत भी मुड़ उस आधारन बावा मैं किसी मा आकार ये का टा केवल क्रीमा टा काल या क्नो भी अदा उदावी तिबेन्ने इटा वड़ा विनास्तात्या मेमा निरोधायन रीति नोल टा अनुवा काटी तो कल युतु कालयक बावटाई विशेष इन में में संबंध वाइद्योरुन अधास्ता करने ऐनी सा इमर रीति नोल टा अनुगतव काटी तो क्रीमा अनिवार्य वेनो प्रमुख स्थाने वाणे प्रमुख कार्य वाणे निमर रोगे वालक्वा गनी मटा दार पतिकार में यदि माई The Beirulla Harbour opened at 4.30 a.m. today for wholesale trading with the support of the Beirulla Police and the Special Task Force. The Beirulla OIC later decided to close the wholesale market after a dispute arose when a number of retail vendors attempted to trade in the premises. The government has decided to close down with immediate effect all pharmacies, supermarkets and all sorts of shops except pharmacies run by the state. Although supermarkets have been permitted to sell essential food items by delivering the f them from house to house, reports were received that supermarkets are being kept open and are selling goods to customers. Therefore, the acting IGP has instructed the OICs of all police stations to have all shops closed with immediate effect. The opportunity prevails for food items and pharmaceuticals to be distributed amongst households by mobile delivery vehicles, therefore across all police divisions, loitering outdoors on roads and on by roads is prohibited. The acting IGP has instructed all OICs to strictly impose curfew regulations. And meanwhile, as curfew was lifted in a number of districts at 6 a.m. today, the public were observed arriving in the cities in their numbers to purchase essential goods. Large groups were seen outdoors in Putlam, Vaunia, Mena, Kilinochi and Bolathir Drift 6 to purchase goods. Our correspondents report that many shoppers adhere to the guidelines given by the health authorities whilst facilities for hand washing were available for the public at many places. However, groups that did not abide by health guidelines were also observed. The government imposed curfew for a number of reasons of which one of to ensure the social distancing to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. If the objective is ignored, it would result in a huge devastation. Therefore, it is everybody's responsibility to strictly follow health guidelines at all occasions where curfew is lifted and maintain social distancing until the risk period is over. The government requests all Sri Lankans who are currently overseas but are hoping to return to the country to stay in their present location safely until the spread of the coronavirus is controlled in Sri Lanka. The government says many steps have been taken to control the spread of the coronavirus. Overseas arrivals in the country have been completely prohibited as a step to prevent the coronavirus from further entering the country and spreading. Other countries have also taken such steps and have suspended flight operations and transportation activities in the country. The request put forward by overseas students, businessmen and migrant workers to return to the country will be considered once the coronavirus is controlled and the situation improves. Should expatriate Sri Lankans head to airports and other locations, they run the risk of contracting the virus. Thereby, Additional Presidential Secretary on Foreign Relations, Admiral Jayanth Kulambage, calls on expatriate Sri Lankans who are hoping to return to the country to communicate with the Sri Lankan diplomatic mission or the consular office in those respective countries and stay safe. And a Sri Lankan infected by the coronavirus in Switzerland has passed away yesterday. The Minister of Foreign Relations states the individual is a 59-year-old male. 
The Swiss government has confirmed that the diseased individual is a Sri Lankan. The individual was confirmed to have contracted the virus when medical investigations were conducted last Wednesday. He is a resident of the Punkutitiv island of the Jaffna district and it is a Swiss residential visa holder. Meanwhile, with the detection of four newly confirmed cases, the number of confirmed corona-infected patients in the country reached 106 yesterday. Seven patients have been discharged upon fully recovery as of yesterday, and the figure includes a Chinese lady who was discharged on the 19th of February upon full recovery. 100 corona-infected patients are currently undergoing treatment at the IDH hospital at Angkor, the Valikanda Base Hospital and the Mulleriao Base Hospital. Medical investigations are underway into 238 individuals suspected to have contracted the virus. Among the Colombo, Gampaha and Kalutra districts, which are high-risk districts in which the virus has a potential to spread, the highest number of infected persons, which is 25, has been reported from the Colombo district, while the 15 persons have been reported from Kalutra district and 10 persons from the Gampaha district. The Government Medical Officials Association state the period from the 25th of March to the 7th of April is a crucial period. Thereby, social distancing during this period need to be exercised to a level of over 75%. According to a study conducted by the University of Sydney in Australia, the Government Medical Officers Association states if less than 70% adherence to imposed regulations and guidelines is practiced, the prevalence for the disease to spread is high. They further state the spread of the virus can be controlled to a considerable level should the public pay over 80% adherence to the mobile restrictions, regulations and guidelines imposed by the government. The Minister of Health has announced that speedy steps will be taken to transform the Voice of America's transmission center at Iran Villa in Chilo into a hospital that can treat corona-infected patients. The transmission center consists of four large buildings in which 50 patients can be treated at a time. After Voice of America left the premises, the land area had been vacant. Minister Pavitra Vanyarachi, Army Commander Lieutenant General Shravendra Silva and Director General of Health Services Consultant Dr. Anil Jha Singh engaged in an observational visit of the site yesterday. The Homagama Hospital has currently been transformed into a corona treatment hospital. The hospital staff were provided 100 rooms for accommodation at the hostel of the Boratua University Technical Institute under the patronage of Minister Bandula Gunavardhana today. Quarantine medical observations of individuals arriving in the country from countries in which the virus is spreading rapidly is underway continuously. Currently, 1,079 persons have successfully completed their quarantine medical observations and 501 such individuals were discharged from their quarantine centres today. Among the group that was discharged from the quarantine centres, 25 persons were from Kandekadu Quarantine Centre and 167 persons were from the Punani Quarantine Centre, whilst 309 persons were from the Diathalava Quarantine Centre. And now for more stories from home. The Department of Inland Revenue states value-added tax payments for the months of February and March 2020 will be accepted until the 30th of April. Issuing a release, the Department of Inland Revenue states the value-added tax for the month of February, which had to be paid on the 20th of March, and the value-added tax, which has to be paid for the month of March on the 20th of April, can be paid on or before the 30th of April. If a registration certificate has been issued on a temporary VAT, its validity period will be extended until the 30th of next month. The release issued by the Department of Inland Revenue further states, in accordance with the Value Added Tax Act, the VAT report for the month of February needs to be submitted on the 31st of this month. And meanwhile, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha has instructed the relevant sections to take immediate steps to uplift agriculture in the country in order to face a future global fruit crisis. Special attention has been drawn towards encouraging manufacturers of locally produced food items. The Premier calls on the public to utilize the time spent at home due to the coronavirus to engage in home gardening as a step in facing a future food crisis. The government is proceeding with a measure taken to provide essential food items to the public in a manner in which the public will not be inconvenienced as a result of certain steps taken to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. The Premier has provided instructions to the Agrarian Service Commissioner and the Agrarian Officers at the Department of Agriculture to provide necessary facilities to focus attention on cultivating every inch of land when implementing large-scale agricultural projects and through home gardening. The Premier has notified the relevant sections to take steps to issue the necessary 
necessary seed and fertilizer for home gardening and for the necessary advisory services to be provided through regional agrarian officers. He called on by the public to extend continuous support to the efforts taken by the government to control the spread of the coronavirus. Head of the Presidential Task Force on Essential Services, Basil Rajapaksa, says whilst adhering to the guidelines of health officials, it is necessary to take steps to maintain the national economy of the country. He expressed these views at a special discussion held at the Temple Trees. Organizational heads of the banking and finance sector attended this discussion. Head of the Presidential Task Force on Essential Services, Basil Rajapaksa, instructed the officials to maintain the state and private banking sector in a manner convenient to the public. He noted, at present, banking services are essential, even at a rural level. He noted, when essential services are being coordinated, the need for banking services also rises. मुदल <laughs> सहानुभूति <laughs> Meanwhile, consensus was reached to have at least one bank branch open for a specific number of hours per day in each divisional secretariat zone in which curfew is imposed. The discussion was also focused on sending representatives of the bank to the residences of customers instead of having the customers arrive at the bank. President Gautabi Rajapaksha has ordered the Sri Lankan Ports Authority to facilitate the requirements ships that docks at the country's port when curfew has been imposed without delay. The Abai Chairman of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, General Dayarat Naika, says all ships have been exempted from demurrage and docking charges. The President has ordered for a number of other concessions to be granted for all port operation services to function as usual. The above steps will be taken to grant within the premises of the port stealth the required concessions necessary for import and export trade to continue as usual. The Sri Lankan Customs and the terminals operating under the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, which are JCT, UCT, CICT and SAGT, will join in the move. Chairman of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, General Dayaratnaika, says steps have been taken to have facilities available available covering all sections. Thereby, terminal and storage charges will have been exempted for the port operations that take place when curfew is imposed with regard to imported containers and maritime goods and imported empty containers. The gate passes and excess permits granted for individuals, trucks, lorries, strippers, browsers and vehicles of public and private agents when using the port premises will be valid during the period in which the curfew is imposed. Steps have been taken for the police to issue as required as upon the request of the Ports Authority permits for essential staff for the private sector who are engaging in port-related duties, allowing their mobility during the curfew period. The facility has been provided for vehicles involved in the transportation of containers and goods amongst terminal services and inter-terminal services to refill fuel at filling stations of Sri Lanka Ports Authority. Steps have been taken to provide health-related and sanitation services, welfare services and transport services along identified roadways to the maximum for permanent staff serving at the Sri Lanka Ports Authority. The government is to implement a concessions package for families benefiting from the Samurdi movement, thereby the awarding of concessions for low-income earning Samurdi families in a number of areas commenced today. Steps have been taken to implement the, this initiative throughout the country. 
Interest-free loans were granted for 13,786 Samurthi beneficiary families of the Ambilipitiya Divisional Secretariat Zone yesterday. Over 130 million rupees will be provided in loans through five Samurthi banks in the Ambilipitiya Divisional Secretariat Zone. The provision of a 10,000 rupee loan as aid for Samriti beneficiary families in the Karyalip Divisional Secretariat Zone commenced today. Samriti officials visited the house of the Samriti beneficiaries to hand over the cash. Cash grants were provided for over 6,500 Samriti beneficiaries in the Putlam district today. A grant of 5,000 rupees each pertaining to the basic 10,000 rupee allowance was granted at the Pallavia Samriti Bank premises in Putlam. Minister Pavitra Vanyarachi commenting on the Samruti concession said the total sum dispersed for the nine provinces in 10,000 million rupees, allocating 5,000 rupees per families. She explained in this interest free and guarantee guarantorless loan, no repayments need to be made for the first six months. She added in the second round, when the beneficiaries obtain 5,000 rupees after six months, their repayments installment will be a nominal figure of 555 rupees.